Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and for those of you who are here for the first time a big welcome to you. Now the weather is starting to get colder especially if you live where I live. We are already getting freezing temperatures, ice and everything and what better way to warm up than with a nice hot cup of hot chocolate. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a keto hot chocolate mix that you can store in your pantry and always have on hand anytime you want a mug of hot chocolate. And I'm also going to show you how to make some very easy, very tasty keto marshmallows. Now you might think that marshmallows would be a little bit hard to make, but the way I make them, they are very easy. So if you want printable versions of these, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find printable versions of these and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, yummy, low-carb, delicious keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out a new video. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some Amazon affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those Amazon affiliate links, a small portion will go to me and will help to support the channel. So anytime you want to buy anything on Amazon, make sure you remember me. Use my affiliate link and a small portion of whatever you purchase will go to me and will help to support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. In a small bowl, combine two tablespoons of gelatin powder. That's roughly about two of those uh, fourth ounce envelopes of the gelatin powder. Make sure it is flavorless. If you're vegan, you can use two tablespoons of agar agar powder, not the flakes. Add a half cup of cold water. Stir these together until they're fully combined and the gelatin or the agar agar is fully dissolved. Then allow it to sit for about 10 minutes in order for it to bloom and firm up. While the gelatin mixture is sitting, in a large saucepan or stock pot, combine a half cup of water, two cups of granulated swerve or granulated sweetener of your choice, Stir them together over medium heat until the sweetener is fully dissolved and the mixture has come to a low boil. So as soon as all the sweetener is dissolved and you see some bubbles starting to form on the top of the water, then it's ready to go. Should take around five to seven minutes depending on how hot your stovetop gets. As Soon as you start seeing the bubbles, then that's the temperature you want it to be at. Once it's come to a low boil and the gelatin mixture has set for 10 minutes and gotten firmed up, add the gelatin mixture to the boiling water and swerve mixture and stir it until the gelatin is fully dissolved. Once the gelatin mixture is fully dissolved, if you have a candy thermometer, attach a candy thermometer to your pan if you don't, it's okay. You can still make this without it. You just have to keep an eye on the mixture a little extra if you don't have a candy thermometer. Allow the mixture to cook without stirring it for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it comes to a full rapid boil and the temperature reaches around 240 degrees. Now the temperature of your mixture is very important in order for your marshmallows to sit properly. So that's why I suggest if you have a thermometer, use it. If you don't, around 10 to 15 minutes, you're looking for the mixture to be at a very rapid full boil. Mine took about 13 minutes to get up to 240 degrees. Everybody's stovetop differs. So you're looking for a very rapid boil and it to be at 240 degrees. Now one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your pan is big enough because this bubbles up a lot. So you're wanting to use anywhere between a three quart and a five quart saucepan or stock pot. I'm using a three quart here and it is barely tall enough. It's, I mean, it came really close to bubbling over. So 
that is the absolute smallest that you can use because once this starts boiling it boils and bubbles a lot and that's what you want you want it to do that in order for it to reach the proper temperature and texture also if you see any granules of the sweetener around the sides of the pan then just dampen a pastry brush and wipe it around the side of the pan to get rid of all those granules you want to make sure that your mixture is completely smooth, otherwise you're going to have grainy marshmallows. While that's cooking and you're waiting for it to come up to that 240 degrees, line an 8 by 8 inch cake pan with parchment paper. Allow the parchment paper to hang over the side slightly because you're going to use this as handles when you take out the marshmallow slab. Dust the parchment paper with about a fourth cup of powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice. Then set that aside. Check on your gelatin and swerve mixture. Once it reaches that 240 degrees, very carefully remove it from the heat. You're going to want to use some kind of oven mitt or heat proof gloves because your pan will be hot. So carefully remove it from the heat and slowly and carefully pour it into a large mixer bowl. Now again, be very careful with this. This is 240 degrees. It is very hot. If any little splashes get on you, it will burn. That is why you need to use gloves. So be very careful when you are pouring this into the mixer bowl. Add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and 1 8 teaspoon of salt. Fit your mixer with a whisk attachment and yes you do need the whisk attachment. You need to be able to beat air into this mixture in order for your marshmallows to be fluffy and light. A paddle mixer really won't do the trick. You'll have more of a tough marshmallow than a fluffy marshmallow so you do need the whisk attachment. Whisk on low for about two minutes just to make sure that everything is fully combined. Then increase the speed to high and beat on high for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the mixture is smooth and fluffy and has roughly doubled in size. This takes a bit, so be patient with it. Mine took about 14 minutes to really get fully to the volume, but anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. You're looking for it to be smooth fluffy and increased in volume. Once it's all whisked together, lightly grease a spatula and loosen the marshmallow from the sides of the bowl. This is going to be very sticky, so you definitely want to grease your spatula, otherwise the marshmallow is going to stick all over your spatula. Once the marshmallow is loosened from the sides of the bowl, then scrape the marshmallow into a shared cake pan. Then use a grease spatula or lightly spray your hands and spread the marshmallow evenly throughout the bottom of your cake pan. Make sure you stretch it all the way to where it covers the entire bottom and keep it as even as possible. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but you want to keep it as even as possible and make sure that the top of your marshmallows are smooth. Then allow the marshmallow to sit in the pan at room temperature uncovered for about three to six hours or until it is completely firm. Mine took three hours exactly, but depending on where you live and how humid of climate you live in, it can take a little bit longer. What you're looking for is for the marshmallow to be completely firm and when you touch it, it should not be sticky to your fingers. It should be smooth and firm. Once it's firmed up, lightly dust the top of the marshmallows with another fourth cup of the powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice. Grasp the parchment paper handles and gently place the marshmallow slab onto a large cutting board or cutting surface. Use a large knife and cut the marshmallow slab into your desired size and shapes. If it seems like the knife is sticking, you can either lightly grease the knife or lightly dust it with some powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice. 
the slab should be firm enough where the knife should easily cut through without it becoming sticky. You can also, if you want to, instead of using a knife, you can use cookie cutters and cut the marshmallow slab into whatever shape you want. You can make it into snowmen or candy canes for Christmas or whatever type of shape and size you want it to be. It's up to you there. I'm just cutting mine into squares. They don't have to be the same exact size or perfectly shaped or anything. It's up to you how you want them to be. Once you've cut them into the desired shapes and size, then roll the marshmallow in a little bit more of the powdered swerve just to make sure that the marshmallows are not sticky at all. You don't want any part of the marshmallow to be sticky. Once the marshmallows are all shaped and rolled in the powdered swerve and they are no longer sticky, gently shake off any excess powdered swerve. Sometimes after you roll it, the powdered swerve can build up a little bit on the top. So make sure you shake it off because you don't want to bite into a marshmallow and have a pile of powdered swerve. That would taste really weird. <laughs> so make sure you shake off any extra powdered swerve. Then you can use these marshmallows in any recipe that calls for marshmallows, including s'mores, or you can just eat them as they are. I like to put them in my hot chocolate. They taste really good like that. If you do have any leftovers, store them in a large Ziploc bag or in an airtight container at room temperature for up to six weeks. In a medium mixing bowl, combine one cup of powdered coconut milk or powdered milk of your choice, a half cup of granulated swerve or granulated sweetener of your choice, a fourth cup of powdered cocoa, and an eighth teaspoon of salt. The salt just helps bring out the flavor of the chocolate a little bit more. Use a whisk or a fork and whisk these all together until they're fully combined. You can also sift them in if you'd rather sift them in to make sure that there are no lumps. Either way, you wanna mix them up enough to where there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Now, if you wanna make a larger batch, you can always double or triple this recipe. This makes a, a little bit less than two cups of powdered mixture. So it's up to you how much you think you're going to want. Also, if you want to, you can add in a fourth teaspoon of cinnamon for a little bit extra flavor if you like a little spice in your cocoa. Once it's all fully combined, carefully pour the mixture into a mason jar or an airtight container. Store it in an airtight container at room temperature. This will last for as long as the expiration on whatever powdered milk you use. It lasts a long time unless you drink it all before then, of course, <laughs> which we usually do. When you're ready to use this, heat up one cup of milk or water. Now remember this has powdered milk in it, so water works just fine. But water or milk, if you want it more creamy, use the milk. If you just want it your traditional texture of hot cocoa, then water works. Heat it up to your desired temperature. Then scoop in your desired amount of the mix. I usually use around two to three tablespoons. You can use more or less depending on how chocolatey you want your hot chocolate. Then use a fork and stir it in really well until it is fully combined. Two things you want to make sure. You want to make sure that your water or your milk is hot enough so that it will fully dissolve, especially the cocoa and the sweetener. And make sure you mix it really well. Forks do better than spoons with this because you really want to make sure that there are no no clumps at all of the cocoa or the sweetener in, in your hot chocolate. If you want to, once your cocoa is mixed all together, you can add some extracts for different flavors. If you like mint hot chocolate, you can add a little bit of mint extract. Or if you like vanilla hot chocolate, you can add a little bit of vanilla extract. It's up to you, however you want your hot chocolate to taste. You can be nice and creative with that. I like to top it with my marshmallows, of course, and drink and enjoy. And those are our recipes of the day. I hope you enjoyed them. If you did and you want to see more videos like these, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.